So I'll be looking at several reasons for unanswered what? Prayer. Seven reasons. I just put some because <laughs> more can be there, but for today's teaching. Some reasons for unanswered prayer. Number one, unconfessed sin. Number one is what? Unconfessed sin. In Isaiah chapter 59, 1 and 2. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save. Neither is ear heavy that he cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. When there is a sin in the heart that is not confessed, God will not hear you no matter how you pray. In Psalm 66 verse 18, shall we read together? Psalm 66 verse 18 together. One, two, go. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Proverbs 28 verse 13. One to go. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. We must confess our sins before our prayers will be answered. If your prayers will be answered, then that sin in your heart, you can't hide it. Are you going to say now? We must confess our sins because our prayers will not be answered if we hide iniquity in our hearts. God will not hear you if there's a hidden sin in your heart. Identify it, confess it, repent from it, and forsake it. Sin will lose its power, and God will hear you after today. Amen. Strive to see sin become a thing of the past in your life. In 1 John chapter 1, 7 to 9. And if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all what? Sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, it's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all what? Unrighteousness. Confession is a seed for divine acceptance. So genuinely, you confess any sin you know about. You don't pretend. You present yourself and your dilemma in the court of heaven and say, oh God, this is what I've done. Have mercy and forgive me. Is that clear? Even if nobody knows, God knows. So to hide iniquity before God is absolute foolishness. Is that what? Because it's the one that will hear you. And sin is a barrier. So the first thing you do is to say, Father, I'm not hiding it from you. Even if nobody knows. Is that clear, sir? I'll give you the next three minutes to say, Lord, if there be any hidden sin that is hindering my prayers today, under this unction, forgive me. Wash me with your blood and completely clear it from my life. Is that clear? And if you know a particular one, don't pretend. Call it by name. You don't need to shout. Say it in your heart. God will hear you. It's not an open prayer. Lord, you know this one. I do it. There's no, even if nobody knows you, you know. Have mercy. Forgive me. My sins. Are you ready? I'll give you three minutes before we go ahead to do other things. Three minutes. You will talk to God. This one is not pretending. God knows you. If nobody knows, God knows every one of us. If you want to sit, you want to kneel, but show that you are telling God to have what? Mercy. Go ahead and pray to God in the name of Jesus. Go ahead in the name of Jesus. For the next three minutes. If you want to kneel down, you kneel down. But make sure you're confessing your sin genuinely to God. Ask him to have mercy on you. Go ahead and talk to him because he's a merciful father. Is ever faithful to forgive those who tell him to show mercy. The blood of Jesus is available to forgive everyone he sins. Go ahead and talk to him in the name of Jesus. Speak to him as a son and speak to him as a daughter. When sin is off, signs will flow. Tell him to forgive you because there have been miracles of all kinds today. 
Hidden sin in your heart, tell him. There be anything, God will show mercy. Is ever faithful to forgive those who confess genuinely to him. They wash away their sins. So what can wash away my sin? That is the song you sing at the end of the prayers. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? But pray first before you pray. Sing that song. You to pray. Go ahead and talk to God in the name of Jesus. Have mercy and forgive. The very blood of Jesus. The blood that wash away every man's sins. Let us speak right now. Go ahead and talk to God. Talk to him as your father. He will hear you from heaven above. He's a faithful father who always forgives those who confess genuinely from their heart. And repent. He will show mercy. Talk to him in the name of Jesus. Call it by name. Don't pretend. Talk to him. Tell him this sin. Ask you to forgive me. Don't, don't pretend he knows this sin. He's God. He's your father. You don't need to tell human beings. Tell him your father. All things lay bare before him. He will forgive you. And Jesus mind in him. So what can wash away my sins? Not in the blood of Jesus. Sing that song, please, together. Shall rise. away Sing it. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Sing it. Sin will be made, heavens will be made. Stand in my office as one he called by election. Today, to those who have confessed, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Every prayer you offer, heavens will answer. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Give me a big hand. You may be seated. Second reason for unanswered prayer. Number two, when your motive is wrong. When your motive is what? So look at the area that you missed it and then you connect it. That's how to pick it. In James chapter 4 and verse 3, it says, You ask and receive not because you ask and miss. That you may consume it upon your lust. Most times, what we are praying about is different from what is in our heart. A motive is the reason for doing something. That's what a motive is. Reason for what? In Second Chronicles chapter 25 and verse 2. 
Look at what the Bible says. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. Motive has to do with the heart. You are now praying, oh God, prosper me. What is your motive? It should prosper you to do what? To oppress people? Are you getting up now? You may say, oh God, if you prosper me, if you prosper me, I will build churches. But inside you, you're saying, I will deal with that man who, wants, who say that he has money. I will show him, shake it, that me to have arrived. And God said, you will never prosper. <laughs> your motive is wrong. Prayer will not be answered. In Psalm 37, 4 and 5, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and it shall show thee the desires of thy heart. Commit thy way to the Lord, trust also in him, and it shall bring it to pass. Motive matters. I told you something. I was praying for a man in Lagos who was going to be with the Lord. We are together. He said, Pastor, I want to be the secretary. Very, that elegy was just starting. This liquefied natural gas. So the minister of petroleum then was close to him and said, he wants to make him secretary. The first, as he was just coming, he said, Pastor, I want to. But inside his heart, he was seen to be a governor. I prayed every prayer I prayed. The thing was not working. My wife woke me and said, she saw this my campaign, you know. I said, what has campaign got to do with the LG? It didn't take two, three years. He said, he wants to be governor of a state. He said, I think I told you. So when we are praying, the prayer was not working because what was in his heart is governor. What was saying with his mouth is secretary. Hmm? Oh God, give me a husband. But this boy, you know, go. <laughs> Pray for me, Pastor. I want to marry. But this one, I hold now. Lie, lie. So. This, this one I really want. This one is what I want. God, but anyhow, pastor, pray. So God said, your motive is wrong. Who you want is this one. Who I want is different. So what's your motive? What's your what? When you're praying, what's your motive? Life story. The pastor walked to my office. And he was talking. He said, God has blessed you. Thank you. He was just talking. And you, I, I knew that something was wrong. And all of a sudden, he, he, he stopped and said, I was driving past and I saw the compound, I saw the generators, I saw everything. I said, what are you doing that we are not doing? I asked God, I said, what are you doing? So God said to me, his heart is wrong. He felt that, what am I doing that is making me prosper and what is he doing that he is not prospering? The motive he was asking, listen, was wrong. He was saying, what you that doesn't even look it? And we have been in the Lord with all our holiness, not his working. So the reason why he could not prosper, his motive was to compete with me. So God did not answer him. He's still a poor man today. I'm not competing with anybody. So when I pray, God answers. You can tell you, be shocked. I don't know what any pastor is preaching. What are we competing? I mind my own business. He said, face where they go. <laughs> I face my business. I face my what? Business. business. Many we are praying, oh God, grow our church. It's competition level. It's a competitive spirit. And God said, your motive is wrong. You are not saying, grow the church for my kingdom. Grow the church so that they can respect me. So when I'm moving, 50 policemen can be moving. God said, your motive is wrong. So when you pray, check your motive. Number three. Are you getting blessed? Yes. Number three. This is why people have unanswered prayer. is unforgiving spirit. It's what? Unforgiving spirit. In Mark chapter 11 and verse 25. And when you stand praying, forgive. Look at it. Come on. <laughs> if you have ought against any, that your father also which is in heaven may forgive you your what? Trespass. So if you, even if you say, God forgive me, and you don't forgive people, that prayer you pray will not work. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. How many want to obtain mercy? It is important for us to learn how to forgive. Very important. Very what? 
I forgive people in advance. But yet, this, Jesus knew it will be difficult for us to forgive. He knew. So he admonished us to love our enemies. Because he knew that in the natural, I can't forgive. In Luke chapter 6, 35 to 37, you hear what Jesus said. But love ye your enemies and do good and let hope you for nothing again. And your reward shall be great. And ye shall be the children of the highest. For his kind unto the untaffled and to the evil. Be therefore merciful as your father also is what? Merciful. Judge not that you shall not be judged. Condemn not. It shall not be condemned. Forgive and it shall be. Don't forgive. And you shall not be forgiven. Where is the Bible? Condemn people. They will condemn you. Be a critic. They will criticize you. Unforgiveness affects every area of your life. Your faith wouldn't work unless you forgive. Your prayer wouldn't be answered unless you forgive. Is that clear? Look at how powerful faith is. In verse 23 of that Mark 11. That's faith. Be thou removed and be thou cast to the sea. And shall not doubt in the heart. But shall believe that those things which you say shall come to pass. Shall I whatsoever what? That is faith. That's how powerful faith is. Are you hearing me now? Verse 24 is prayer. Therefore, something you want things to ever you shall desire. When you pray, believe that you see that you shall what? Have that. Prayer. So faith and prayer, powerful. But look at 25. And when you start praying, forgive. So before you take your faith and prayer to jump together, forgive. If you have ought against any, that your heavenly father, that your father which is in heaven, may forgive your what? Trespass. Verse 26. But if you do not forgive, neither would your father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. So here. Many will say I have forgiven, but I cannot forget. You know what to forgive means? To forgive is to cease to feel resentment against an offender. That means anytime you are still reserved against somebody who did something you have not forgiven. Are you hearing me now? But let me say this to you so you don't get confused. When I say forgive, does not mean you forgive spiritual wickedness. Oh. You don't forgive spiritual wickedness. If somebody is using charm against you, don't forgive him. And you have to balance scripture. I say forgive. If a witch, he says suffer not a witch to live. Somebody who is a witch, you don't forgive her. And forgive is the physical things. And somebody cannot carry your name to witch doctor. I say, God God's actually forgiven. Ah! I didn't pray. Balance prayer. <laughs> yeah. if forgiveness is physical things. Somebody insult you, your head is big. Will it be small? Forgive him. <laughs> All your mates are married. You are not married. Forgive the person. Is that clear? And the young man left you. I married another girl that you, you didn't believe. Forgive him. He has left you. Forgive him. So you took a marry. And no, don't, when it's past, don't say you could die with this one. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive him. God will give your own husband. And I pray for everyone who obeys God's word. Whatever blessing I was hanging will be released to you right now. <laughs> Forgive him. And God will give your own husband. That is not your husband. If it's your husband, he won't leave you. Are you hearing me now? Yes. Somebody better will come. Yes. The woman too is not your wife. Maybe she left you after you trained her. <laughs> Only if I'm a year, she now knows that you are not qualified. <laughs> I said, she, now that I'm going to NYC, it's not, we are not matchable. <laughs> <laughs> it's only if I'm a year, they are not uh, matchable. Yeah, one, he pays school fees. Yeah, two, he pays school fees. Only you use service time. He said, no, I don't like him. Condition are not the condition are not favorable. <laughs> Please, from year one, stop eating the money. <laughs> but forgive her because she has gone. Some God will give you your own. I learn to forgive. Learn to what? Forgive. I forgive you. Look, if I don't forgive, many people can't be here. Yeah, I forgive you. I've told you over and over how I forgive people. One that told my driver to carry a car to somebody, he says, Sir, sir, to who? I said, Come on, my friend, carry my car, they can go. He says, to who? To who? I said, the car, my friend, go and give him the message. He said, ah, what kind of person are you? I said, shut up. <laughs> Obey what I've said, that's all. I forgive people. Someone has abused me. Abused me when I used to wear one coat. <laughs> you know, now, they are suited different from coat. I'm not even no coat. You know coat? So we wore coat, I wore coat to a conference in Lagos. Then, Winner's Chapel was in Yanakpaja. 
So the conference, I wore the coat from Monday to... The conference, I didn't have two. I had only one. So I wore it morning, afternoon, and sessions. Because everybody has a conference. We have morning, afternoon, evening. So morning, afternoon, evening, one coat. So you notice that I wore that one coat from beginning to the end. <laughs> so it came close to me. You know, there's a way someone will abuse it. Abuse it. Ready for them to call your name. <laughs> and I stood by my sister. Some of you say God did not. Because he was working then. You know, I was not. I came and started from the scratch. So to start from scratch is not it. So some of you say God called you. We don't know. Can't even buy, change your dress. <laughs> Can't even change your suit. He was saying it to me, and I knew it was me. It meant for him to say, I'm talking to you. <laughs> I, didn't do, I did as if I did not hear. After it was done, he left. He didn't take up to, I think the following year, less than two years, he came to, to Shiloh and did not have money. And I'm, you know, God will make you always remember. The money we did could not even pay his accommodation. And me, I had bundles. Life has changed. I was not wearing coat, I was wearing suit. <laughs> In that case, uh, I said, ah, boy, I didn't say I did as if I knew what he was said. He says, well, oh. I said, what is the problem? He said, I can't, you know, my money to even pay. I just said, I don't put my hand in my pocket. Give him the bundle. I said, ah, go and pay your accommodation. It was him who did not know what to do again. My friend, I decree, as you forgive people, your heavens open now. As you forgive, I declare, whatever blessing that was hanging, be released in the name of Jesus. Please. I know your mother-in-law offended you. Forgive her. So your prayers can be answered. Yes, your mother-in-law did not agree when you were to marry our son. But forgive her. Forgive her. For what? She's your mother-in-law. Without her, you can't. You can't uh, take the egg and throw away the chicken. That lay the egg. You love your husband, love the mother like that. Number four. How many will forgive? Lift your right hand. And say, Lord, Lord remind, me remind me of anyone I have not forgiven. Not and this is how you know. It will remind you some people you will never forgive. Hey, you know why Joseph became great? He could forgive his brothers. If it was Reuben, <laughs> Reuben would have said, for Reuben to parade this, you know, it was, he would say, hey, you people, he threw me to a pit. I will show you people shaggy. <laughs> I've shared a testimony before. As a young man, I stayed with someone and I came back from travel, they locked the door. The door was locked, changed all the keys. And I stood by the door, tears came down from my eyes. And I was walking to, from Ogba to Ikeja bus stop, confused, scattered, shattered. I said, God, what do I do now? As I was moving, God said to me, I will use you. That was where I heard, you are going to, maybe God, LTs work together for good. He said, I'm going to use you. Since you have refused now, stand, listen to me. I stood. I heard God for the first time. I'm going to use you. Now the same person came to me years after and said, Pastor, my wife has left me. I have nowhere to stay. Can you help me borrow me some money? And I said, I won't borrow you. You were good to me. You asked me. So I'm going to give you 20 million. Don't bring it back. I'm dashing you this money. Take this 20 million and take this one for house rent. So 20 something million. I said, take it because you, I didn't say you locked up. I said, you are good <laughs> to me. You are what? I didn't refer him to what he did. I referred him to the one that he will never think back. Today we have a relationship. That's why God has lifted me. Yes, Forgive people. It hinders prayers. It hinders what? Yes. I'm not the most righteous, but God hears me. There are many factors. Small thing you hold people. Even inside church, there are people you will never greet. What makes you a Christian? You say, no, 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 you can talk your own. I don't, I don't believe the Bible. Which one will you believe? If you don't believe the Bible, what will you believe? Better believe this Bible. So God will hear you. 
Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. May God hear you from today. Amen. Number four. Are you getting blessed? Yes. Number four. Reason why many have unanswered prayers, you may be surprised. When you are not generous. When you are not what? Lack of generosity hinders prayers. In Proverbs chapter 21, verse 13, shall we read together? One to go. Whoso stop it, yeah, let's do it together. One to go. Whoso stop it is ears at the cry of the poor. He also shall cry himself, but shall not. Lack of generosity hinders prayers. Learn to be free handed. It takes more than just God bless you. As God has blessed you at your level, be free towards others. When you are stingy and wicked, God will never hear your prayers. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Somebody saying, I'm hungry. He said, God bless you. <laughs> when you can give the person food to eat, he won't answer your prayers. He said, when you cry, he will not hear. May God hear you today. Amen. These are simple, simple things. People think that, oh, hey, he's not hearing me. No, very simple things that make prayers not to be answered. Number five. Each one, look where you missed it and package yourself together. Is it food? You can't come to my house and not eat, except you're fasting. When you come to our house, you must eat. You must eat. Except you're what? Ill treatment, number five, that hinders prayers. Ill treatment of family members. Ill what? Of family members. That is mistreatment of family members. That's what I mean. Mistreatment of what? Family members. First Peter 3 7. Likewise, shall we read together? Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. Giving honor unto the wife as unto the wicked vessel and has been heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hidden. In the amplified version, he said, in the same way, you husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way with great gentleness and tact. And with an intelligent regard for the marriage relationship. As with someone physically weaker. She is a woman. Show her honor and respect as a fellow heir of the grace of life. So that your prayers will not be hindered or ineffective. Can I say this to you? Check any man who does not give his wife pocket money he will be broke. No matter how he prays. If you doubt, check all men who don't give their wives allowance, no prayer will make them to be rich. It's not because you don't have. It's a spiritual law. I have not seen one man of God who does not give his family money that ever prospers. When your wife starts feeding the house, poverty has started. She may be rich, but give her the little you have. Once you don't do that, pray from now to tomorrow, the oil on you will be running dry. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, it is not everything demon, 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 demon. You will pray from now to tomorrow, church won't grow, business won't grow, nothing will grow. I've not seen one man who is wicked towards his family that he prospers in life. It's a law. You will pray from now to no prayer will work. If you don't live with your wife as an intelligent manner, in an intelligent manner, according to the Bible knowledge, is that true? You will hinder your what? Prayers. Now, hindering your prayers is like having God to hang up the phone while you are making your request to him. That's the meaning. You are praying to God, God just say, no way. I remove the handle. <laughs> so at your level, start giving. Start what? From the day of when I was earning 1,005 salary, I gave my wife 50 money. My first salary in this ministry was 1,005. 
and my last salary was 15,000. I said, no more. I told them to store salary because I want to prove what I, I teach. I said, I'm a prosperous man. I will tell you that I'm super prosperous without salary. And we have lived the crowd from day one. I didn't say, because what I have, my wife, what will I give you? It's what I have. I won't keep myself. This is what I have. <laughs> it's a covenant. I removed Tai Chilo from that one thousand five. I removed offering from there. I still gave her feeding. I actually want to feed. It's not my business. <laughs> <laughs> my own is to obey the word of God. And we kept growing from one thousand five to five thousand to fifteen thousand. I told them, stop. I know this thing. I'll prove to you that I, I'll prosper with that salary. I stopped salary long ago. I'm not on any salary. She's not on any salary too. But we are, we are blessed. Listen, you don't know what you're doing treating your family anyhow. Are you hearing me? Yes. Wicked or <laughs> I go show my wife. You are showing yourself. Oh. <laughs> okay, since you have been showing, have you prospered? That would tell you something is wrong. Please, from today, change your don't say how much. The reason why the money is not growing is because you are not doing the right thing. Number six. I don't think I need to preach too much here. Number six. Number six. You are, going to, you are going to be shocked. That is the longest of all for today's teaching. There are something, and number six is where many are victims. Number six. <laughs> that hinders prayer is worship of idols. Worship of what? Idols. You call it idol. I D O L S. This is what we call idolatry. In Exodus chapter 20, 1 to 5. Exodus 20. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of the hands of bondage. You read verse 3. I make unto thee any grieving image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. And thou shalt not bow thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the turn and fourth generation of them that hate me. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. When you serve other gods, you invoke the wrath of God. Idol worship is of the devil. It's not our forefathers' religion. People, when they want to be funny, say, that's what our forefathers do. No, it's idol worship. It's not our forefathers' religion. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long had ye between two opinions? If the God, if the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered, him not a word. In Joshua 24 verse 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose ye this day whom you will serve. What are the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood? Or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell? But as for me and my house, we we'll serve the Lord. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. There are four kinds of idol worship. How many kinds? There are four kinds of idol. If any of them you find yourself, it will affect you. A. Any man made God is an idol. Is an idol what? In Exodus 20, 1 to 5, where we read, any grieving image that demands the worship of man is an idol. Anything made by man that you have to bow to as a God is an what? It's an idol. Don't worship it. It will affect your life forever. Because God is a jealous God. Idol worship is dangerous. It opens door for attack.
Some of you are in church. You still belong to a cult. Be careful. You can't mix the two. You can't mix what? He said, choose which one you want. If you are for God, be for God. If you are for the devil, be for the what? Don't mix the two. The day you die, God will tell you. Satan will tell you. I wonder where you go. Please. If God is God, then clean up. Then what? Don't worship other gods. Second kind of idol worship, B, is the worship of money. The worship of what? The worship of money. Next chapter 20, verse 23. You shall not make with me gods of what? Silver. Neither shall you make unto you gods of gold. Exodus chapter 32 verse 31. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Oh, these people have seen the great sin and have made them gods of gold. Today we have all manner of love for money. People do anything to get money. It's demonic and satanic. Shall he profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? In Colossians 3, 5 to 6, hear what the Bible says. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is what? So covetousness is love of money. It is idolatry. When you see anything you want to covet, he says what? I don't, you want to covet anything. You can do anything to get money. No! God says idolatry. Many do anything in this world to get what? They can do anything. They can betray. They can blackmail, frame up just to get money. They can tell lies to get money. They can kill, shed blood to get money. No, that's not how it is. Luke 12 and 15. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of what? Confessiousness. For a man's life consider not in the abundance of the things which he what? Possessed. He said, No man can serve two masters. Matthew 6 24. For either we hate the one and love the other, or else we hate the one and what? Despite the other. You cannot serve God and what? You can't serve God and money. Hear this. Having money does not mean serving money. And it's not having money that brings worship, but money having you. Money what? When money have you, you are worshiping it. That is, as long as it's money, you can do anything. If you want to use your hand, they cut your hand, you use your teeth. If they close your teeth, you use your eye to carry it. Today, you can see everywhere people doing all terrible things for money. Some are ready to kill their own blood, their mother who gave back to them, pound, kill their mother for money, mother who carried you. Some will pound their own children, children they gave back to for money. Some will kill wife, wife, kill husband for money. That's a life today, even in the church. Even what? All of you who are believers, who are close to your brothers, you know them. They say, come and take house. Please, before you live in your brother's house, ask, why will my brother, who hate me now, because of my church, want to give me free house? When they give you free thing, not every free thing you take. You park in there, the man dies there. The man hates you because of church. All of a sudden, he built a massive house. He said, come and take one portion of the house. He said, my brother like me. He has finished you before you take the house. <laughs> Nobody will finish your life. <laughs> Better live in your one room which God gave you than to live in a mansion that will die early. You know the man is a juju, juju, juju. He said, my children go on holidays there. The man who take back to enter house, back to enter house. <laughs> You are sending your children. Your children will not be seeing a man. Take him back. <laughs> Take <him> back. <laughs> I 
And some of you do are in church, or oh, you come to church with one leg. What the politics they give you from you feel? What, what kind of appointment will make you disappoint God? What kind of Christianity is that? For money. A Christian, you're a disgrace to Christianity. You are ready to enter cult because they will give you commissioner for no movement. <laughs> See. Shout hallelujah. Yeah. The third form of idol, see, is the worship of self. The worship of what? Is an idolatry. It's idolatry. Worship of self. <laughs> the worship of self mostly has to do with pride. God will never answer a proud man. You need to meet proud people. Even when they are wrong, they will never <laughs> say, no, no. God, God. You know how, why God did not answer Saul, he answered David? Saul mistake was not as much as David's mistake. But the difference between Saul and David was that Saul was a very proud man. Even when he was wrong, he said, I did it because. That's how you know a proud person. Proud people don't ever accept their fault. I, I did this thing because. No, if you are wrong, you are wrong. David said, Nathan, I'm wrong. What you're saying is right. But when Samuel told Saul, he said, you know, it's good that we give God the big things. He said, but I told you to destroy everything. Why do you have to bring? Do I need sacrifice from you? I said, destroy everything. When you are proud, even your speech will show. Am I the only one? That's the first sign of a proud person. Now let me do one for church. I beg you. <laughs> Leave this thing, John. Everybody, even pastor, they do one. So now you are proud. Because if you are not proud, when somebody corrects you, you say, sorry. God, show mercy. No! What are you talking about? People, they do them. So if I do them, now let me. No, let you. <laughs> the worship of self. A typical example is Nebuchadnezzar. It is a product of what? Worship of self is a product of pride. Now let's see Nebu. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Nebu. <laughs> I think it's Abba and say Uncle Nebu. In Daniel chapter 4, I think I'll read 30 to 33. 10 to 37, that's where the whole full scripture. But look at, when you read Daniel chapter 4, you get the whole story, the whole 4. You don't read the whole 4. But I just take 30 to 37. The king spake and said, it's not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the mind of my power and by the honor of my majesty. <laughs> you don't have to be born again, no. It was not born again. God has no time whether you're born again or not. He said, is it not great kingdom? My hands are what? God said, Nebu. <laughs> While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee. And they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee. Or that thou knowest that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will. The same hour was the things fulfilled upon the Christians, and it was driven from men and did eat grass as oxen, as much as it was wet with the dew of heaven. His hair were grown like eagle's feathers, and his nails like bear's claws. At the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, <laughs> lifted up my eyes unto heaven. And my understanding returned unto me. And I bless the Most High and praise and honor him that liveth forever, whose dominion is everlasting to me. And that time he says he has come back. <laughs> as kingdom is from generation to what? <laughs> and all the inhabitants of the earth are repeated as nothing. You know that I say, hey, oh boy, if people have seen what I've seen, calm down now. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven. And when the inhabitants of the earth and none can stay his hand and say to him, what doest thou? 
Now, verse 37. Now, I never that praise and extol and exalt the king of heaven. All whose works are truth, as well as judgment. And those that walk in pride is able to happen. Worship of self is a form of idolatry. You don't need to be rich or successful to be proud. When you hear some people talk, you see, you think they are God. They attribute everything. When you see a man wants to fall, the first thing he does is to attribute everything to himself. Look, if I talk, if I'm not there, nobody will make you in this system. I will make you, ah, uh, falling has started though. When you hear a man start talking like that, just know his end has come. You want God to hear you? <laughs> eh? You are not the most beautiful woman, no. Be careful. You look at everybody who talk to you. Because uh, this pride, nobody will marry you. You pray, oh God, oh God, even people are more finer than. <laughs> because uh, I think he said, he said, now you beautiful pass. Thank you. He told him, he said, who can talk to me in this church? Is it because Pastor David is talking? Oh, I can't talk to him. I have my PhD. <laughs> Please hold your dollars. <laughs> and then with all that I've read, who's going to talk to me? And with your PhD, nobody wants to come near you. Please, nothing hinders prayer like what? Pride. Finally, D. The worship of human. It hinders. The worship of what? I said I will spend more time here because this is number six. Number seven is not going to take me time. Worship of what? Human. <laughs> this is where many of us are victims. This one, no. Many of us are not victims of pride. This is this, this one. This is the major problem of Christians and people. Jeremiah chapter 17, 5 to 7. Are you getting blessed? So you know where you missed it now? Do you know where you missed it? Glory to God. Even if you didn't miss it, now no, so you don't miss it. Thus saith the Lord, cursed be the man that trusted in men, and make it flesh his arm, and whose heart departed from the Lord. And he shall be like the heat in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall in a be the partial places in the wilderness. In the salt land and not inhabited. Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord. And whose hope the Lord is. If you read verse 8. And it shall be like a tree planted by the, by the waters. That spread out her roots by the river. And shall not cease when heat cometh. But her leaves shall, not, shall be green. And shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Human worship is what we call Godfatherism. Let me say this to you. Never call any mortal man my godfather. Never. It's a wrong language. Don't follow on sinners to use that language. Nobody can be a god and a father to you. That man is my mentor. But not my godfather. It's human worship. No mortal man can be your godfather. It's a wrong language. And some of us, that's my political godfather. Two of you will sink. <laughs> Somebody can be your godfather. You hear me? That's my mentor in politics. Not your godfather. Two of you, the day you will fall, you fall with him. God said it is a cause. It's a what? And some of us, we put our trust in men. We don't even remember God when we are praying. Even when we are praying. Father, I know the governor will help me. The president, I know him, so no problem. God say, hey, 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 hey. Take your two eyes up, all of you. Everybody, whether your house, take your eyes up. Look at the one light. Up. Everybody else in your house must have light. Even if you have lantern, look up. <laughs> look up to the ceiling of your house. Even if it's roof. Have you, are your two eyes up? Try to bring one down. Don't pretend to be looking up to God and be looking up to men. God can use any man, but don't look up to the man he's using. So I'll lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, the maker of heaven and the earth. Can I tell you something? I've never looked up to any mortal man for help. Thank God for whatever you think you're doing, but I will never look up to you. You are not my source. 
Don't make man God over your life. Anything outside the most high that requires your worship is an idol. And hear what God said in Psalm 16 verse 4. Their sorrow shall be multiplied and hasten after another God. Their sorrow shall be multiplied and hasten after what? Matthew 9, 27 to 30. And when Jesus departed, thence two blind men followed him crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus saith unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Ye Lord. Then touch ye their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. I am answering you according to your faith. Faith is an important factor in the school of prayer. It is faith-filled prayer that moves God. So it is faith that gives substance to your prayer. Yeah, listen, hear me well. <laughs> I'm going to make a statement. Please listen to this statement I'm going to make. It is not faith when you say God can do it. I know God can do it. It's not faith. It is faith when you say, because God has said this, I know he will do it. So when you say faith, means you have a scripture you're standing on. That's all I'm trying to say. It is not faith when you say, I know God can heal me. It's not faith. I know God will do it because he said, by stripes I am healed. It is not faith. I know God will do something. That's not faith. Faith is standing on the integrity of God's word in your prayer to say, based on what he said, I'm standing on this. Then this will happen. Faith is not saying God can do something. Faith is standing on the word of God to commit God in your prayers for him to answer. So God can do it without the word of God. It's no faith. That's assumption. Set yourself in faith because you are, you are sure for an answer. So before you start communicating in prayer, make sure faith is what? Built. Faith is what? It is the only way to move God. For without faith, it's impossible to do what? To please God. Hebrews 11 verse 6. These are prayer secrets that will deliver you from rigorous and futile sweating in prayer. When I pray, I get results. May I pray, I get what? No, no, no. If I pray, I must get results. So I've given you things that you don't need to. So when you want to pray, you know that this thing is not one. He <laughs> said, We spent five hours. Five. We were bombarding heaven. Then they will not open their eyes like this. Five hours. How many hours did you pray? Two hours. Nah, yes, my boy. Five. Five. Okay, the five hours. Is there anything to show for the five hours? How can you write an exam and you do not pass? I said, I wrote 55 full scraps. He said, I. With the examiner, no. I asked for paper, 55 A pass, no. <laughs> but the full scraps I wrote, plenty. It is not the long time. The results will determine if you prayed well. Are you getting what I'm saying? So make sure you put them to practice. Now, I want to summarize from day one to last day. I summarize them in words. Know your rights as a child of God. Know your what? Know your rights as a child of God. I'm just summarizing everything I taught. Refuse to be ignorant of the power of prayer. Refuse to be what? Of the power of prayer. Now you know for this that prayer is very what? Important for a child of God. Is that clear, sir? Don't be lazy. Don't be what? Be disciplined to get up to pray as a child of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Change your attitude. Pray the word 
which is the promise, instead of telling God your problems. Pray the word. Stop telling God your problems. That's what many of us do. God, you know I don't have a house. That is not what God told you. Present your strong reasons. Stop telling God your problems. He knows your problems. When you are going to pray, listen, let me tell you, don't ever pray problems, pray promises. Don't go to God and say, oh God, you know I'm an orphan. He knows already. <laughs> tell him, oh God, you say you shall the father to the fatherless. That's what you tell him. They say, oh God, you know I'm a widow. You are the husband of the widow. Tell him the word. Oh God, you know I'm sick. No, by your stripes, I'm here. Stop telling God problems. Remind God of his promises. What we call prayers most time is complaining. That's why we don't get answers. Don't pray only when you feel like. Do it as commanded. I repeat, don't pray only when you what? You don't have to feel like going to write an exam. You will write an exam if you're in school. So don't say, I don't like to pray. You will pray oh. Hey, 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 you have to what? Pray. Pray. You know what he said in Luke 18 verse 1? <laughs> Men ought always to pray. Men ought always what? Pray. And not to pray. From today, live a prayer life. Live what? Pray. Then I wrote some, this is a quote from me. If you want evil to cease, then pray without ceasing. If you want evil to cease, pray without ceasing. First Thessalonians five seventeen. Check any time you are prayerful, evil will be far from you. Have you noticed that? If you want evil to cease, pray without ceasing. Let prayer become your lifestyle. Please listen. Pray. No matter who prays for you, it is your prayer that matters most. Pray without ceasing. Have I said something to you at all? Yes. Have I said something to you? Yes. Well, number one, reason, unconfessed what? Sin. Number two, when your motive is wrong. Number three, Unforgiving spirit. And number four, when you are not what? When you are very stingy. Number five, when you treat your family members anyhow. Number six, worship of idols. Number seven, lack of faith. Rise to your feet. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. So you now know these are the reasons why people don't get answers to their but I'm sure you'll get answers from today. Yeah. I'm going to get answers from today. So Lord, if there be any of them I missed, I ask for your mercy. In the name of Jesus. Some may miss all. Some will have missed all of them. Some have missed only one. Some have not missed anyone. I can say now. But I'm going to leave you to pray. Elijah got to a time he prayed alone for the rain to fall and for the rain to stop. Stop and follow him. Hannah, the Bible said, in the temple, the first Samuel chapter 1, she was alone in the temple that even Eli did not know that she was praying to God. And God heard her. Is that true? And in Genesis chapter 32, 24, 28, the Bible said, and Jacob was left alone. He wrestled in prayers. He said, oh God, God, today you will bless me. I won't let you go. And he was blessed. Jesus was alone in the garden of Gethsemane. All of them fell asleep. He carried them, but they slept. On the Mount of Transfiguration, he carried them, they slept. I noticed everywhere people had outstanding prayers, they were alone. Ezekiah Isaiah came to him, he said, you will die. He said, as, as I go, don't join me in this prayer. And Ezekiel as, as lifted his face towards heaven and said, oh God, Isaiah 38, you'll be left alone. 
You are going to talk to God in that area of your life. He said, oh God, you answer prayers. He said, unto you shall all flesh, what? Come, I have come to you. Answer me today. I've been a part of these three days. Even if you come now, you are part of the three days. Those who came at the 11th hour, he paid them the same thing. Lord, answer me today. My story must change. I can't be like this. Turn my story around. God will answer you. Yeah. He will answer you. Yeah. I said, God will what? Yeah. It's all that heareth prayers. Unto this shall all flesh come. I have come to you, O God. Answer me today. If you want to kneel, you kneel. If you want to stand, you stand. If you want to sit, you sit. But make sure you're not sleeping. Call on God the way you have never called. Yesterday we turned on heartfelt prayers. I tell you, you must get an answer. Yes, are you ready? Yes, are you ready? Yes, now, you are, look at James, John, sorry, John 16, 23, 23, 24. John 16, 23, 24. And in that day, you shall ask me nothing. Very, very to you, whatever you shall ask the Father in my name, not he may, he will give it. Do you believe God will give you? He yes. that have you asked nothing in my name? Ask. It shall receive that joy before. Lord, I ask according to your word. Father, in the name of Jesus, this is what I want. You and God, go ahead in the name of Jesus. Pray also in the Holy Ghost towards the end. Pray seriously the way you have never prayed in your life. more. Pray. Pray to God. Call on him. He will answer you. Begin the round of your prayers. Begin the round of your prayers with thanksgiving. 
God is faithful, tell him thank you. Go ahead and tell God thank you. Oh, thank you for answers. Thank him in your understanding. Thank him in the spirit. Go ahead and thank him. Thank him in the understanding and thank him in the spirit. Thank him and thank him and thank him. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. God has answered our prayers. He has heard us already. I think we. God has answered our prayers. Heard us already. God has answered our prayers. He has heard us already. God has answered our prayers. God has answered our prayers. He has heard us already. God has answered our prayers. He has heard us already. God has answered our prayers. He has heard us already. God has answered my prayers. He has heard me already. God has answered our prayers. He has heard us already. God has heard them. You are returning with testimonies. In the name of Jesus.